Hello, welcome to the Happy Investor Method Show with your host, Angela E. Matthews. I am so elated for today's topic because we're going to be speaking about something that really hits home for me and is something that I am continuously working on. And if you're a high achiever or if you're a self-made person who is aspiring to have a substantial amount of money in your lifetime, then I am sure you have had some questions or experiences around this topic. So today's topic, we are going to speak about, are you worthy of wealth? The reason why I wanted to speak about this was because so many times we are hustling and bustling, trying to make things work trying to do so many other things to make ourselves be more wealthy. However, in the back of our mind, we may have this question, are you worthy? Am I even worthy of these desires? Am I even worthy of the money I have currently? Am I worthy enough to get to where I want to be? Am I worthy enough to have a legacy and to make an impact? Now, this is something that has hit so many other people. Oprah Winfrey talks about it. Michelle Obama speaks about it. So many self-made people really and truly say that this is something that has come up in their life on multiple equations, regardless of how often or how much money they acquire. So I want you to think about this question in its entirety. Am I worthy of wealth? I want you to tell you, I want to tell you about a story of a time when I personally didn't have as much money and I didn't necessarily realize it until I was in the atmosphere with other people who did have money. Anybody can relate, right? Can you relate? And so here's a, one of the first times that I realized that I was not as well off as I thought I was, or I just never really thought of it as a, I'm not well off. It just came off as this is the situation and this is what I'm working with. So it was uh, in my college days and it was a time when my parents were working both full-time jobs and they couldn't take off of work to take me to school. Now, if you've got kids in college or if you've been to college, you know this is a really big deal, you know, moving your kid into their dorm. But at the time, my mother couldn't take off and neither could my father. So I had to take a bus from New York City to the sticks. I tell you, the bumble, like the sticks of upstate New York, eight hours, which is where I originally went to undergrad. And I got there and I have my two huge suitcases. They're both so heavy. I have to pick up one, get one off the bus, and then go back on the bus and pick up the other one and get it back off the bus. And I'm there with these two big suitcases. And I'm at my, my college. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I finally made it. Whew. I can't wait to tell my roommate. And, and I wonder how my roommate made it here and all this stuff. And I'm still thinking about all the things I have to do once I get to my dorm. I think about have to unpack like how am I going to figure out to, to to get myself to Walmart like what are these things that that I didn't really think about until I got there so anyway I'm I'm at the school and I'm pulling my suitcases up and I look around and I'm expecting to see other people get off the bus but no one else gets off the bus but me for my school everyone else stays on the bus like they're going someplace else so I'm just sitting there like it's only me going to school this way and I get out the bus and I look and there are all these people with cars, their own cars, and their parents are taking their bags out of their cars. And I'm thinking there are multiple cars, like for this one kid, you know, she had her car and then her brother had his car and then, and then the parents had their car and they all really came as a community and moved their daughter in. And I remember thinking, am I not worthy to have my own car? Like, why don't I have my own car? And why don't I have my own family coming here to help me with this? And it was one of the first times where I realized that I thought everyone was doing something. I thought everyone, I thought no one got a car, you know, when, when they graduated high school. I thought everyone's parents had to work. And that, again, was the first time I thought of, I guess I'm not worthy. I guess I'm not good enough to have this stuff. 
So these are things that come up in our day-to-day -day life. I've definitely had this feeling. And I want to let you know that whether it be college, high school, working at your job, being late, passed over for a promotion, or even being laid off at some point in your life, we have all had a reflection point of where we can look at what's happened and relate it back to what we are going through personally and in our lives. And so personally, that's why you may be thinking, are you worthy of wealth? You know, these are little indicators and markers. On the other hand, you've got the institution side of it, where typically speaking, if you are of African descent, or if you are a woman, up until a few days, decades ago, you were not able to own property. Now, whether this was blatantly said as if you were a woman, you know, if you were a woman up until the 70s, you couldn't have a bank account without, or a line of credit without being married or having a male vouch for you. If you are an African-American or a person of color, there's a really great chance that even though it may not have been explicitly said in the 70s, that there may have been systemic things put in front of you to prevent you from actually building and amassing wealth. And so when you got to look at television shows to see what wealth looked like, you had a moment where you got to see, well, this is your life right now, and this is what it could be and how they were different. And I wanna let you know that the way this is, is that you could be making decisions right now from that point and that place in time when you felt this. And so there are times when things may happen to me and I might feel as if I'm not worthy or that I am stupid or that I am not justified in, in having a desire. And I remember the exact feeling I got that college day. And that same feeling will well up inside of me. And I'll make a decision from that Angela from, you know, years, decades ago. I'll make a decision from that Angela versus making a decision from the Angela I am now, who is nothing, like nowhere in the same position. And so I want you to think about when was a moment that you came across in your life where you felt unworthy. And I want you to really remember it. Remember it as crystal clear as you can. And I want you to think about the feelings you had. And then I want you to think of the last time you had that feeling. And I almost guarantee you it was not the first time you had the feeling. And the last time you had the feeling, they're not the same event. Because we remember things, right? We have financial trauma, our emotions carry with us and they impact us the way we see the world and the way we make our decisions. So if you have a chance where you had just come into a huge sum of money, perhaps it's a bonus, perhaps it's an inheritance, and you find yourself not knowing what to do with it or incapable un of understanding how this can impact you or just straight understanding thinking, I don't deserve this, I want you to think about where is that coming from and where in your life have you been put in a situation where you had to compare yourself. Now, I do want to let you know that in spite of feeling this way, there are things you can do to overcome it. And you do have to work from it, right? And so it's almost as if we're in the matrix and it's like, do you want the red pill or the green pill or the blue pill or the red pill or the purple pill? I really can't remember what pills they had. But once you know, you cannot unknow, right? So once you go back and you find this moment where you thought that you were not worthy and that you know that you're operating from the same space, you know, and some of us, this goes back for like generations. Some of this, this goes back for decades. Maybe you have a thought of when you were a kid and your, your parents took you to a store and said, we can't afford this. Or maybe you could have afforded it and you looked, but your parents just said, no, you're not going to get it. And then they turned around and gave it to your sibling. And you're thinking, wait, I wanted that at the time. And you never gave that to me, but you gave it to my sibling. Again, unworthiness. So I want to tell you that there are solutions that I found to, to handle this. And so one solution I found is that even though I have a desire, God put that desire there for a reason, right? And so I've got a desire to, to reach, you know, at least $500 million in my lifetime, a really crazy big desire, considering it will be coming from me being self-made, right? 
not inheriting money or anything like that. I will actually be making every single last bit of that dollar, like those dollars. And, and that's my vision. And there was a time when I had a vision of being just a, a millionaire, 1 million, right? There was a vision where I thought of being a high thousandaire, whatever that is. But I want you to know that God places that desire in you. And it's up to you to see how it reveals itself. And so I have no idea how that's going to happen. 500 plus million dollars in my lifetime. No clue. But then again, it's also not my thing to know because there are things that probably haven't even come into existence yet that will assist me in making that. However, it is my consistent ability to take risk and to, and to just approach it with curiosity that will allow those things for preparation to me, opportunity to get me to the luck that I need. So that's number one. God put the desire in you. So if you want a yellow Lamborghini, if you want a, a house off the cliff of Cabo, if you want your own island, heck, if you just want a little condo, you know, down the street with a doorman, it does not matter. It is your dream to have and you are not crazy for having it. The other thing I want to tell you in terms of worthiness and are you worthy, once you start amassing your wealth and like I said, I'm not where I was, thank God, <laughs> where I was in college, where, you know, I couldn't even afford to drive myself to school or rent a car that I had to actually take a bus and put all my things in a suitcase and beg someone to like take me to Walmart with their family. Yep. I'm no longer in that space. But there are times when I do get blessings, when I look at what, what I have and I think, why do I have this? Why am I worthy enough to have this? Why did God answer my prayers? You know, I'm a, we're first time homeowners and my parents never owned a home. All the years they were here in this country, they, they never owned a home because it wasn't within their psyche to think that they could own a home, right? And so that's a generational flip that, that we've already made, my siblings and I, in terms of owning property, right? And so what I wanna say is that it's been paid for. Everything that you have and everything that you will have has already been paid for. The price was already paid. Everything I have, I am absolutely worthy of it because of what my parents have gone through, because of what their parents have gone through, because of their parents' parents, my ancestors, all the struggle, all the strife. Everything that they have sacrificed to be who they were, everything they sacrificed to not be who they wanted to be, paid for me to have everything I have now and everything I will have and everything that my kids will have. And the same applies to you. Whether you're a person of color or not, whether you came from an immigrant background or not, whether you came from money or not, it does not matter. Everything you have has been paid for. And honestly, everything that you're doing now, you are paying in advance for the next generation whether this be people who are directly descendants of you or people who are going to be impacted by the impact you had on this planet. And so when I walk into a room and I think, what am I doing here? Nobody looks like me. What am I doing here? Do people know that I didn't come from money? Like I have to acclimate to the environment. I think it's okay for me to be here, right? Because my parents, this is why they sacrificed it. So I can be here. When, when I go abroad or I've traveled to 40 something plus countries, every time I think, what am I doing here? I think, you know what? I deserve to be here. That, you know, for lack of better words, you know, my great great grandmother, who could have been on a slave boat somewhere, she, she couldn't even fathom my existence. And the fact that her DNA is in me today means that she's there too. And so what I want you to do, remember this is point two, is know that you get to have what you have because the price was already paid for, right? It's already paid in full. 
doesn't matter how you got it, doesn't matter what blessings come to you, you are absolutely worthy of everything you have because someone else has paid the price. And for them, they chose to pay that price. They chose to make the sacrifice. Granted, some of them might not have been in the best positions or may not have wanted to be in situations. But in that moment, if someone said, hey, you go through this now, and in the three generations, your, your grandchild or your great-grandchild will blow your mind and change so many things around them. I'm almost willing to tell you that they would say, okay, that makes me take this and be stronger. So that's the second thing. Remember, number one was, are you operating from a story in the past and making your decisions now based on a feeling of unworthiness before? Number two is knowing that everything you have and will have has already been paid for because of the sacrifice of our forefathers and our ancestors, and even from yourself, right? Even you who, who studied and burned the midnight oil on, a, on many occasions when you were getting your degree, even you who put in extra hours at work, even you who had to sacrifice and pull money out of an account or move things around at some point, even you who, who just decided to, to make a goal and go for something that no one else has gone for, you already made the sacrifice to have what you want. And lastly, I want you to think of mental markers that you can have from people's stories that you can use for yourself. This will help you know that because someone else exists, you can exist as well. So here's what I mean. Back in the day when I was probably like, I mean, I probably did this up to at least like two, three years ago. So I can't even lie and say back, back in the day, I would go to a bank and I would pull money out and I would look at my receipt and I would see, you know, do, 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 this money was there. And I would think like, dang, that's just totally not how much money I want to see in this account right now. And I would, I mean, don't laugh at me. I'm laughing at me, but I'm also very nervous and even saying this. So please have some grace. I would go in the garbage can. I can't, even now at a time like this, I'm like, I can't believe I did that. And I would look at other receipts to see what other people had in their accounts. Because I just had to know, like, I just wanted to know, you know, my account may have a couple of thousand. Somebody's account may have like a couple hundred thousand. Like there were times when my account had a couple hundred and I would see somebody else's and it would have like 2000. And I think, oh man, that's a nice number. And I would take these receipts home and I would literally like scratch out the person's like name or their account number or their last digits, whatever it is. And I would write my name on it and I would write the ending digits of my account number and I would save it. And I remember times when I saw, you know, people would have a couple, like 50,000 in their account or times when I see 70,000 or times when I see, you know, 600,000. I'd be like, like you can have all this in one account there are times when i saw multiple like seven figures like a million plus and just knowing that that is possible gave me a bit of a marker i'll tell you another instance of when this happened i was sitting on the plane uh from a trip and i got to talking to the lady next to me and she was going to visit her son and she was saying how proud of him she is, and she's going to go help out with the kids. And she also said that, you know, he just bought a house, and I'm very proud of him. And I was like, oh, that's cute. You know, that's, that's great. And she said, you know, I always thought to myself, where was he going to put all the stuff he has? And I said, oh, that's cool. And she said, well, this house that he built, he built a house on a lake, and he made his garage underneath his house so that he can fit all of his boats and cars. When I tell you, my mom was like, wait, what? Say that again? His garage is under the house and he has boats under his house, like boats, plural, encapsulized with his cars. And everything she said was in multi, like plural. And so I thought, wait, what? Like, how do you even have that? Like underneath your house, there's, so you could just go on out into the lake with your boat and not even like, what? And so that kind of blew my mind because I thought, I may never have that or never, I don't know if I actually want that, 
But to just have the option to build something like that, if you, if you have a yacht, and she said yacht, she didn't even say boat, she said his yacht, right? And so you know how big a yacht is to fit under your house? And so I made a mental note. I remember another time hearing a friend a couple years ago, and she was talking about how um, she wants to give her mom some money. And she was saying, you know, my mom needs $75,000 and I only have 95 in my, in my savings. And I remember thinking, what? You have $95,000 cash? Like that is someone's salary for a year just sitting in your account? Like, how is this possible? And then it got to a point where I was able to have over $95,000 in cash sitting in an account. And I remember when it happened and thinking, I hit that, I, I hit the, the, the road marker. And so what I want you to do is, when you listen to people and you listen to them, you know, talk about their wealth and, and I'll, and I say things to you, it's not to brag or anything is to just expand your appetite for wealth. And because I know that I'm not, you know, that 20 year old who, who didn't have a car. And because I know that I'm not this person who's in a room who doesn't belong there. When I, when I hear these things of other people's lives, I hear it as, if you can do it, I can do it. Because there is nothing different between you and I. If you worked hard, I can work hard. And that's what I want to say to you. There is nothing different between you and I. Everything you want, it is already within your reach. You just have to go and get it. And the only person stopping you is you. You may have to work a little harder than somebody else. You may have to, it may take a little longer, but in the end of the day, does it really matter? When we speak about the people before us, and I mentioned if someone was going through so much strife and they got a glimpse of their future and they saw that in a generation or two, or even in a couple of years, that it would be completely different and their wildest dreams would be an absolute reality. Does it necessarily matter how long it gets there as long as you know it will? And with that said, that's what I want you to think about. That is how you become a happy investor. Because you are going to accumulate money and you're going to see as you've accumulated money in your lifetime, even now, sometimes it is just not enough. And so with that said, I want you to understand that you are enough, you are worthy, and I want you to start dreaming bigger aiming higher, moving quicker, because the person that you are going to be in this world is someone that people can't wait to meet, including yourself. And so with that said, I am ecstatic to see what you do with your new worthiness, your newfound worthiness. Make sure that you send us notes, that you drop it in the comments. Make sure that you keep me posted on how your appetite for wealth is growing because I wanna be there to support you and I wanna be there to show you how to, how to feed this appetite with actual funds, actual money, actual tangible things to let you know that you are making it and you're making it work. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to follow us or know more, please go to happyinvestormethod.com. There is always a freebie there for you to get. And I am elated to be in your earbuds or in your speakers talking about something that so many people are not talking about. So consider yourself a part of the secret club because we about to do some big things. <laughs>